can a program committed to educating highly motivated students with limited financial means change the world? Is it possible or is it a dream? I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. No, every child is not created equal. I believe every child is equal. But if you are smart and poor in this country, it's very difficult to get a good education. And that's why we're here. We have relationships with wonderful private schools, with endowments, with significant financial aid, and we have a way to get these talented, smart, ambitious young students into these schools and an opportunity to go to some of the best colleges and universities in the country. It's clear to me, given the number of people who are willing to pay tremendous tuitions at places like these, that there's someone out there that thinks this is an advantage. So that being the case, SEEDS in my mind serves as a bridge from school systems that often lack the resources, will, sometimes both, to educate the kids in the manner necessary to take advantage of an opportunity like Petty. So SEEDS grabs you when you're not sure which group you want to join. You're not sure if this education thing is cool. And then they say, look, we're gonna get you in sixth grade, seventh grade, before some of the pressures to make the wrong choice are prevalent. And we're gonna put you into a system where you're surrounded by other like-minded, if, if not similar kids. And then they give you that extra leg up. So when you come here and have to write your first three-page paper, it's not your first three-page paper. When you're surrounded with other motivated, bright kids, you don't perish. That's a tremendous service. We have created a much greater likelihood that that child is gonna go back to that neighborhood, go back to that school system, or something much more global and say, listen, I better take advantage of the opportunity that I've had by making a difference in, in my community, if not my world. This is a world that is based on judgments, prejudgments, you'll say, prejudices maybe, for good or for bad. Maybe in these new situations, you will give everyone else the advantage and think you're the one that's on the outs. Maybe they will look down on you and say, you don't really belong here, or even vice versa. Well, I'm telling you, it is your job not only to define yourself for them, but be able to understand their definitions of themselves and give that as much value as you believe. If you take any kid and you send them off to a boarding school at age 14, that's not a normal experience for any kid. You add on to that fact that these kids are coming from backgrounds where many of their parents are not college educated. That's one more strike. My father is a parking attendant. My dad's a barber. Right now I work for a limousine company in New York City. They're coming from inner city schools. A lot of the kids are in gangs or doing things that 14 year olds shouldn't be doing. Overcrowded. There's about like 40 kids in each class. Most of them come from families where English may not be the first language. My parents are from Malaysia. India. China. Cuba. Poland. Ghana. Puerto Rico. Colombia. Ecuador. Portugal. Brazil. Jamaica. Nigeria. Dominican Republic and El Salvador. The Philippines. Haiti. Albania. Pakistan. Bangladesh. Mexico. You have socioeconomic issues where these kids are not coming from affluent backgrounds and they're going into schools where the culture is, you know, about people who have money. My financial class does not define where I can end up later on in life. There's a lot of different things that say these kids shouldn't succeed. When you add them all up together, the scales are not tipped in their favor. And then when you look at where these kids wind up in terms of their high school options, followed by college options, which will then lead to professional options, that makes this opportunity just one that they can't afford to pass by. When I first applied for seats, I was in seventh grade. The guidance counselor, she called down a select group of kids. And she saw my grades, and so I had a good grades. And she was like, I could get you into this program that will help you get into an independent school. We took the applications, and then from there on, we just, if you wanted to apply, you do it, and I did it. Well, we get hundreds of applications from middle school students all over New Jersey. They're inner city students. They're bright, financially disadvantaged. 
and the kids and their parents want better opportunities. And we have to select 200 of those students to start our summer program, summer between seventh and eighth grade. You get to be with other smart people and you don't get made fun of by other kids. Like they call you geeks just because like you're smart. But here we encourage them. You're probably made fun of if you don't excel and if you don't do well. Those 200 students study with us for five weeks, math and science and study skills and time management. And then we select 100 students because that's the number of financial aid spots we can secure at private schools for those kids. <laughs> We don't accept students into this program because they're getting straight A's, but we are really taking that student and that scholar and that family into the program who wants what SEEDS has to give. When I was told I got into the SEEDS program, I was very excited. I hid behind my closet door and I just started screaming. These scholars have been selected to continue with SEEDS, and we're here in the woods of New Jersey learning how to make decisions, learning how to live together. It's a chance for the parents to let go of their kids for a few days. It's a chance for the kids to let go of their parents for a few days. We don't allow cell phones. We don't allow Walkmans. It's a chance to be with SEEDS and trusting some adults in their lives that their kids are being taken care of. Those 100 students go on during their eighth grade year every single Saturday. I work all week, Monday to Friday, and then Saturday I have to go to school, so it's like having six days of school. And then I have to get up early on Sundays because I go to church, so I have like no free days. She did the work, she embraced the work. I was impressed with, with the amount of work that she did, and she did it on her own without me having to gold her or prod her into getting her work done. I love my friends at home, but they're really different. Like, I love being with them. They're really cool, they're down to earth, but like, we're hanging out and I'm like, oh, I have to go home, I have to go do a research paper. And they think I'm crazy, but like, I don't mind, I like it. Steed's kids are much more serious about the education. They're just like me. They all pushing for the same thing, to be excellent in the academic Academics, and they're just all wonderful kids. These children remind me of me. And that relationship, that connection, makes it easy for us to teach, for us to learn together, to learn one another. They have it, that, that it that is not describable. However, it's, it just really shows and shines when they're in the classroom. The word for today is carpe diem. Oh, oh. French. I know. Latin. Carping dia means um, live your life to the fullest no matter what happens. Exactly. The here's the official translation. It means pluck the day. The first thing I try to explain to them is that they're investing in their future. And, that, you know, this is not for me. This is not for their parents. This is for them. So that they're coming here and they're spending five weeks, and it's a demanding five weeks. They start at 7 o'clock in the morning with a breakfast check-in that's mandatory, and they basically go nonstop. I go to my first class at 8, and I have my second class. Then we have break. Then I go to my third class. Then I go to lunch. And then we have another class. And then we have electives. And then after that, we sign up for an activity. There is usually volleyball, soccer. You can play tennis and go to the computer lab, go to the library, and you just choose whatever you want to do. And then after that, we have dinner. And it's good. <laughs> after that, we have an hour and a half of free time. I usually go to the library because it's good to do homework there. It's nice and quiet. So I do that and then study hall from 8 to 10. After study hall, I usually take a shower. <laughs> and then 10.45 lights are out. But it's a good day. And this is their summer. So we're teaching leadership and we're teaching pride and we're teaching education and we're teaching access and opportunity. The opportunity for her to go to probably the top boarding school in the country. I never imagined that for my kid. I was just thinking of getting her the best public education that I could get. And so this is above and beyond what I was looking for for her. So it's paid off. Times are changing. The world cannot be a world of private membership and privilege anymore. Colleges are becoming aware of this. Fortune 500 companies are becoming aware of this and, and have been aware of this. The people that they're looking to build their company or their community or their school is a mirror of our society. And everybody in this society is going to become a member of those communities. 
If I were teaching a U.S. history class and one of the students in the class called it the Civil War, one of the students in the class called it the War of Yankee Aggression, and one of the students in the class said, I'm the great-great-great-grandchild of a slave, you have a very different U.S. history class than you otherwise would have had. So the diversity of interests, experience, and backgrounds contribute to a much more eclectic and electric learning situation. And it broadens their worldview and, uh, and their perspective in ways that change their lives forever. Ingrid Nunez. I tell my kids that I came here, we're not rich people, we don't have any money, but you guys can do much better by having a great education. NJ Seeds needs to become USA Seeds. We've got to have organizations like Seeds that are grabbing those kids out of their environment and enriching it, and then partner with schools like this. It's only a matter of time before people start to really catch on that you don't just have these diamond in the rough situations, that there are so many students who simply just don't know how to make the process work for themselves. So this program would probably benefit hundreds of thousands of children all across America. I am so excited about going away to boarding school. I can't wait. Well, of course, I'm going to miss my family and everything, but, but come on, I've been with them for 14 years of my life. It's done nothing but strengthen me as a person, strengthen my social skills, and also my academic skills. And now I feel much more prepared and comfortable going to boarding school next year. Wow, I'm in seeds. I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. I can't wait till I graduate from season, become one of the alumni, and I'll never be removed from that. The reality is, you know, those with get to attend, those without. Hopefully you get to find a New Jersey Seeds, but there's not a New Jersey Seeds out there for every kid. Seeds gives these kids an opportunity to dream, an opportunity to think about their futures, an opportunity to appreciate education and value learning, and feel joyful about being smart and feel joyful about going to school. That's pretty special stuff. Um, I know everyone in my town says that I'm going to be the first woman president. <laughs> so that that's probably, there you go. <laughs>